Dude, pare. I'm not Conio. What is Conio, by the way? And is Conio a language? Is Conio a lifestyle? Or is Conio everything that has Starbucks in it? These are the questions that you may or may not learn in this podcast. But I'm pretty sure you learn a thing or two about the Kanyo people and the Kanyo language. I will be discussing some key points in my um, in my research and also in my paper. Um, I'm doing this um, this this segment this this podcast for my anthropology and uh, anthropological linguistics class in San Carlos. And um, yeah, it chose the discussion about the Kanyo language, specifically uh, the Kanyo language, pero like vis a vis social inequality in the Philippines. So that's what my, my, my discussion is going to revolve around. And um, it's pretty interesting uh, when, I, when I did this whole thing. Um, I like to learn about the origins of the of Konyo as the word itself and how it came to be. Also, how that word has affected um, social class, um, social currency, how people treat you, and all of that stuff. So, if you think about Konyo, it's not just about how we think of people from La Salle or maybe people from Ateneo where they may sound obnoxious or they kind of have elongated ways of speaking. Um, it's not how... It's not necessarily just the discussion of being maarte and snobby in the way they talk. It's not just about the tusuk tusuk of the fish balls, but I guess there's something more than just that. So stick around and make sure to kind of, you know, interact in the comments and think and just let me know what do you think about Kanyo as a language, and Kanyo the personality or the image of a Kanyo person, and how Kanyo how the Kanyo language reflects the social inequality in the Philippines. So um yeah so uh in in this podcast I'm going to have some clips and snippets of two experts about of the Kanyo phenomenon and um what their insights are so it's really really interesting I talked to David Kua or David um David Wildex and I also um had a conversation or sorry um I had a did, I did a little quick interview with Sarah as well of Bye TV so, um, I guess I want to start with the origins of the of Kanyo, and when I start with this discussion, I want to start with Kanyo as the word itself. Because when you think of Kanyo, we just think, oh, these are the cool people, you know, the the the, the Zobel people or the the people from Poveda or some, some somewhere like that, where they always make something, make pandiwa, where you know, can you can you like um how do you say this like a uh, um. Can you make hatid me in school because um, I don't want to drive my car and masyadong maraming um, um, cars in the parking lot. So can the driver just hatid me? So it's not just about that, but you know, it's this. It's the most common feature of the of the Konya language where we t- where no no we what what probably you've seen skits in in TikTok and 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 um. You know, in Instagram on how they always kind of mesh the English and the Tagalog. But here, Konyo is the Spanish word for cunt or vagina. or And um, why was it used to refer to the rich people? One account showed that actually um, Konyo or the word Konyo was fairly or was was uttered frequently by the Spaniards during you know their occupation in the Philippines tapos um uh, 
they kind of say these words a lot and when the, the Filipinos or you know back then they were called Indios at the time they kind of pick up that word and then they just refer the word conio to the people who you know to the Spaniards so and then with the and then as time went on uh sinasabi lang nila that that conio just referred to the Spaniards who lived in the Philippines um these are the mestizos or they you know they are fairly wealthy they're very mayaman and they lived in exclusive neighborhoods and etc um another place of origin was also in during the american occupation we know um where english was considered to be the 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 it thing you know and um it's it's a language of the sophisticated and um you know it, it sounds bougie if you use the english language So of course being Filipino and um uh, maybe the colonial mentality na Janase you might want to think that um to associate with someone who is in that level of power you have to kind of mimic them and one obviously one powerful way of mimicking powerful people is through the usage of their language. So um we the Filipinos would then would try to imitate or or even speak English um with with whatever english comprehension level that they have and then ginagaya lang nila and then they kind of just you know sprinkle words sprinkle, sprinkle english words in their tagalog or cebuano language so that they kind of would try to mimic you know the americans and through that the through this this mimicry there is this 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 attachment of of prestige attachment of being a posh or being social um because of that language so um why is that so well uh sinasabi kasi is that um the 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 connection to to extravagant lifestyle and the expensive clothing or the 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 want to be you know the want to to become much more rich i guess would always kind of show out in all aspects and that includes language and when it comes to language is what we call language ideologies and language ideologies um this is where um this is it's the study of and the discussion of of putting culture and pl- putting politics that I- in language and how the usage of language the vocabulary the syntax and even the mere pronunciation of words may have political economic or cultural connotations through just you know just uttering the the, the words and that has definitely um affected the kanyo language itself Um so that's one thing with one aspect where it could highlight economic status it could highlight um I don't know like some sort of a cultural um implications and it's just so happen that Kanyo is heavily associated to you know the powerful the rich the wealthy the Spaniards the, the Americans and you know having these European mentality or i mean having this filipino colonial mentality and how we see you know parang 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 sila sabi natin na that, that the the europeans and and the americans are more something that we have to that is the, that their lifestyle is something that we should covet in, in a in a way but when we're talking about the characteristics of the konyo as a language they have their own vocabulary um they have their own way of speaking and and i'm pretty sure if you if if you've encountered a conyo person in in real life or even in the internet where there's a lot of conyo skits from other people um you already know a thing or two about the conyo language where i already one was the one that i discussed was the mixture of using english and 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 tagalog or their native language in everyday conversations Um let's just uh, let me try to give you an example uh like um um let's say I need to get some Starbucks. Okay? So a Kanye person would say to the barista something like this like, "Oh, hi sir. Um can I get um one one frap 
yung ano yung uh, what do you call this the the mochaccino sorry <laughs> this is a bad impression because uh, uh, I don't really know <laughs> what drinks are there are in, in Starbucks I just usually get the the chai tea latte but okay let's just imagine this is a chai tea latte like kuya can I get one chai tea latte and can you make it ice because I gusto ko like super lamig and then um, can I get the um, the French toast as well but um, remove the 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 syrup I don't want it too too sweet because because I'm on a diet and um but but there in palod na rin ng Starbucks card ko um going more like two thousand uh uh-uh. and and then imagine if I have a, a friend oi oi pare like do you wanna do you wanna have some um, Starbucks um you know I, I'll make libre yeah man free or free yeah that, that, that no problem no problem. <laughs> Sorry, that was like a bad impression of a Kanye conversation, but basically, uh, it it kind of sounds like that. Um, uh, yeah, you see the mixture of the the English and Tagalog. Also, if you noticed the how they pronounce certain Kanye words, especially the R's in in Tagalog, um, there's no there's no trill. In the R's, or there's no rolling of the R's. Um, when we say rolling, um, you know it. Uh, it sounds like uh, what do you call it? When we say para, the rrr, the rrr sound, we will always have that feature when we're talking in in Cebuano or in English. Or sorry, t- Tagalog or in in Cebuano. Oh, um, like you say reina, or you say murag, uh, or you say um um uh, rajo there's a there's a, there's this r sound but then if be, one feature of the Konya language is of the removing of the trill and then replacing it to more an anglicized pronunciation of the r sound so instead of saying para you say para or you would say you, you wouldn't say reina you would say reina so, kuya, but para san po tong, ano, um, <laughs> para san po tong, <laughs> um, like, uh, like, brownie, um, para sa akin po ba to? Because I'm kind of hungry kasi. So, I kind of sound this, it sounds very, um, preppy, um, it sounds very valley accent. You know, uh, because of obviously the ex- exposure of of other culture. So, in the last part of my discussion, I mean, the last part of this podcast is where I'm gonna share you my quick interview with two content creators who bank on the Kanyu image and the Kanyu language to make it something more of a comedic relief, or even to show social commentary. Um, through skits and through videos, it'll be it's it's super interesting to get their side um, of the story and know what it's like to kind of uphold or show this Kanye image not in a necessarily very serious way, but e- but to a more palatable or even yeah to even to make it even more that it it seems funny that you are a Kanye person. Because it's given that there are other speech communities that have greater backlash because of the usage of certain languages, languages or even their linguistic features and you know the community itself. But the Konyo community or the Konyo language has maybe, um, you know, they are they are not quite as ostracized as compared to let's say the lgbtq community and the usage of gay lingo or ebonics and the black community it's very very far from that so um they don't it, it it's it's but it's also something that's worthy to discuss about because of the highlights of the other language ideologies that are involved in the certain language so thank you so much for listening i'm gonna give you guys the interview and yeah, 
Um, if you want to learn more about the Kanyo language or the Kanyo culture and all that, definitely check them out. And I hope you guys learned a thing or two about the Kanyo language. So these are the thoughts of Sarah Del Mar, who's one of the um, Kanyo content creators, <laughs> I would say, in, um, in Cebu City. Um, here. He said, um, some additional insight as well. I think growing up, my parents have always told me to speak in English. They taught me English first, and they made sure that I spoke English at home and that I would think and naturally choose English as my language as a kid. And I think a reason for that is they wanted to ensure that I spoke it well growing up because nga, there is a some sort of social connotation that if you spoke English well, you came from a good family or you you were taught well by your parents or you're um, up there in terms of social class because maayo ka mo storya in English. So I think that's a reason why I said na if you're an adult and you speak to choose I mean, you choose to speak English by default, you're automatically thought of, ah, okay, anak sadato, or you're a rich kid, or you're a konya, because you choose English over Bisaya. Say it again, I have a nephew who's like 13 or 14 years old, and he cannot speak Bisaya, and he's born and raised in Cebu. And the reason for this is because growing up, his parents taught him English and never made the effort to teach him Bisaya, never spoke to him in Bisaya, because... Their um their understanding is that um, English is way more valuable than Bisaya. You need English if you wanna, you know, work. If you wanna mingle with people. If you wanna succeed in life, you need to have good English speaking skills. Bisaya, you can learn that later on. Like, master your English first, and we want you to be comfortable and really native in English speaking. Tapos, you can learn Bisaya when you're an adult. Like, it's not that difficult. But we don't want you to get comfortable speaking Bisaya over English at a young age. It's harder to correct later on. Okay, so real talk lang. Um, I grew up going to schools that were for the Konyas or the rich kids of Cebu. Um, I've tried a few. And when you're in that type of circle where everyone is Konya, all the parents are also Konya, they want their kids to speak English, we spoke English by default all the time. Like Bisaya was like alien to us. And I think when you're in that circle growing up, it's okay that you all speak English that you don't know Bisaya. For you, that's normal. But then when you become an adult and you start, you know, joining the workforce and people are, you know, different, come from different walks of life and you realize like, shit, I don't know how to speak Bisaya. Like, I'm the odd one out now. I'm the weird one. Everyone knows Bisaya and not me. I need to be relatable. So then as a you know, a rich kid or a Konyo, you start trying to learn Bisaya and to incorporate Bisaya into your um, vocabulary. But then because nga, you grew up speaking English and that you were trained to think and process your thoughts in English, when you're an adult and then you're trying to incorporate Bisaya in your vocabulary to be more relatable with the people around you, it can sound a bit awkward and off. Therefore, the mix of Bisaya and English makes you sound very, very Konyo. Yun. Yeah. So like me right now, I'm mixing. <laughs> so yeah, I hope I'll see. All right. Um I'm gonna start with um with are you Konyo? Uh okay. So the correct answer is I'm not a real Konyo. Because by definition, Conyos are these like old, big Spanish, rich families from around the Philippines. And I'm actually Chinese. So like the term has evolved, right? Because yeah. like it used to be um, Conyos and um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this word, Indios. I mean, it's historical. I don't yeah, think right. people yeah. take it derogatorily anymore. But yeah, it was Conyo, Conyos and Indios, right? And like um, uh, the word Conyo is actually... A bad word in Spanish, mm -hmm. which means vagina or cunt or something like that. I don't know if you can use that for school, but like okay. I, there I it is. Included in my paper, I have to include this. It's part of. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, it was used to basically make fun of um the old Spanish families, right? And the term evolved 
uh, I heard about it first in Manila when all my friends were going to college there and the word Conio was being thrown around because my friends went to La Salle, they went to Ateneo. And so um, it basically evolved into b- meaning rich kid. Mm-hmm. And like the mannerisms, the dialect, the entire lifestyle of being Conio into what it is today. And uh, I grew up in an international school in Cebu. So when I was starting to make content, like I was asked, what really separates you from everybody else? And I was like, I asked around, they're like, oh, you're like the most Conio person I know. I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just went with it, right? And um, it turned out pretty great. Like it got me a lot of projects. It brought me to a lot of places, but in essence, I'm not a real Conio. Like I'm Chinese. So <laughs> yeah, in the in the most original sense, like and yeah, 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 yeah. It, um, it, cool. My research it all it all started with um in the Colegio de San Agustin, where they were talking to again Spanish kids who studied yeah, the yeah. San Agustin. You know, they're the Conio kids, but then yeah, it it kind of diluted over time and all that. But why? Um, a next question is, um, I don't know. Uh, whenever a person would ask if you are Kanyo, where the typically the, the that person is always going to be associated with being Kanyo, they shy away from it. Why do you think that is? Like, I'm not Kanyo man, like, or indeed, indeed no, I, no, I'm not Kanyo, but why is it that people shy away from that term? Well, we're in a very eat the rich kind of period, so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it just has, it had a lot of negative um, connotation to it, right? Like, but For sure. it's, it's language, language evolves. Just like the word bitch, before the 2000s, everybody didn't want to be called a bitch. Bitch was such a bad thing. Paris Hilton came in and like, she would casually call Nicole Richie bitch and they call each other bitch and everybody started calling each other bitch and now gay people like call each other bitch and like, it kind of lost all its negative meaning. And so I think there's also a thing about being Filipino. Like we like humble people, mm-hmm. humble people. <laughs> <laughs> like we have these certain virtues that we think are, um, that we aspire to, the very Maria Clara mm-hmm. virtues, like patience, humility, um, all that bullshit. Yeah. And that. so like <laughs> when you say somebody's conyo, I think back then it, really meant a bad thing and so people wanted to shy away from that and today it's become sort of a joke because like um people back then could try to deny it i think people these days are like it is what it is what am i supposed to do about it (laughs) do you think um like whether like the word bitch or you know or other types of terms that that seem derogatory like even for example for the black community saying the n-word was very yeah. very 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 you know bad but they yeah. kind of embrace that one and turn that word into something powerful so they use yeah. it in their own community in the black community do you think yeah. the word conial would should would have that kind of thing where a conial person shouldn't shy away from the term and then kind of embrace the conialness in a way do you agree with that? <laughs> well, um, I know the concept you're talking about is reclamation. So yeah. it's reclaiming a word that was used against you before. Um, I think the Chinese did it in the Philippines. Insect was a derogatory term before. And when you ask Chinese people, like, what does that mean? Uh, when you ask people, like, what does that mean? Like, it means you're Chinese. And Chinese people are like, okay. <laughs> like, um, so, like, it lost a lot of, like, negativity towards it. But I think a lot of conyos today, like especially the Gen Z ones, they're just, they just go with it, you know? Now, it, like it, it really has, it's less about like embracing it and making it into like something positive for yourself or some give you a sense of community like the N word would have mm-hmm. or the F word for, cause I'm gay. So like, um, I, I guess we have our own uh, word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's cause you being, the word gonyo wasn't on the side of the oppressed. So it's like, there's nothing really to reclaim about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's more of like, it's become a running joke. And it was never harm that harmful to begin with. You know, like, it's not like people weren't getting jobs because they were gonyo. <laughs> it's just like, people take things like that less seriously these days. 
Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Um, what are, what are the linguistic features? Or like, how does a Konyo talk? Like, okay, um, I think familiar with it. So regionally, it's very different. Mm-hmm. In Manila, like uh, everybody is pretty like. I feel like in Manila, Konyos would be more Tagalog, and then they'd put some English in, and they'd have their slang, um, specifically the La Salle boy slang. Mm-hmm. Like um, these are the guys from DS, DLSU from La Salle Green Hills. Like these right. are the guys that go like Scoobs, Pare, like those <laughs> types of guys. <laughs> I can't talk much about that. Like I have friends from like you know that part of life but like I didn't grow up there mm-hmm. and Cebu on the other hand um because Cebuanos don't speak Tagalog right so we grew up speaking English consuming English media and uh I guess I can tell you this little anecdote when I was younger a teacher told me that and nobody cancel me for this okay because this is just an anecdote <laughs> a teacher told me that like she doesn't like watching Filipino media because she thinks it's trash and you know when you're a little kid you just soak that in you take it in and take it at face value so a lot of us grew up not watching uh filipino media mm-hmm. and so we consumed a lot of american media so sabuano conio is really a mix of it's mostly speaking english and inserting the pasaya words that you know so for example i would speak this entire sentence in english and I would add bitaw at the end, or like, because um, it's like that, man good. Mm, yeah, so, like man good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really just the simplest Bisaya things you pick up. And this this is gonna sound horrible, but you pick these up from your yayas, your drivers, uh, and when you hear your parents speak Bisaya. And these are the words that you pick up, because these are the ones that appear in every sentence, right? So. That would be Sabuano Konyo. It's just English with a Bisaya word at the end or a Bisaya word at the start or somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Davao Konyo, on the other hand, is um, which is a content creator <laughs> friend of mine. Um, and I asked him, what is Davao Konyo? He's like, it's Tagalog and Bisaya mixed together. I'm like, why? And he said, in Davao, and, and I guess you have to verify this somehow. He said, in Davao, People think, not him personally, he didn't say this part, but like a friend of mine from Davao told me, they think that Tagalog sounds fancier in Davao. And oh. to me as a Sabano, that's so weird because <laughs> Sabanos are so like Bisaya pride, right? Like we only speak Bisaya, you're in Cebu, speak Bisaya, don't speak Tagalog to me or whatever. And so it's just like, I guess in a way it's what sounds more sophisticated to people, whether that's intentional or unintentional. God, and uh, I guess um, even the mixture of those types of languages, and this is where I'm getting to my my study. It's it, there's always ties with ideologies. There's it's not mixing of languages just because, but do you think there's a reason why people mix it? Because it's there's a difference between code switching, whether because you can't really speak the language. But yeah. there are people who definitely speak English, who definitely speak Tagalog, but why do yeah. they speak Konyo? Is, the, is there some sort of ties to maybe a social status, maybe some sort of you get social currency by saying, by speaking in Konyo? Do you think? Well, so? my, my legit Konyo friends, like they are from like Spanish bloodlines and whatever. They didn't speak Bisaya at all growing up, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the schools back then, like in the 90s and the 2000s, they discouraged you from speaking Bisaya because everybody wanted their kids to be fluent in English, right? And uh, it made sense at the time because we wanted the kids to be globally competitive and the only way was to be able to speak English, to send them to school abroad, to get them jobs abroad. So I had this one friend he, he's from a really old Konyo family. I'm just not going to say who. And um, we were, <laughs> we vacation on this island sometimes. And I was making fun of him. I was telling him that like, 
you have to eventually learn how to speak Bisaya, okay? Like, if you are gonna take over your family's business or do whatever you want in the future in the city, you'll need to learn Bisaya. Otherwise, like, mailad ka or whatever, right? And so, when I was teaching him Bisaya, like, just little phrases, the only things he could retain are certain words, like, the root word of things, like, luto, or um, he couldn't get any of the prefixes or suffixes right. He would only get the mangods, bitaos, and like all the little words there. And when he tries to speak to his staff on like his like island house or whatever, that's what would come out. It would be, can you make us for dinner, palihog? Or like, um, puede iluto the spaghetti later? <laughs> and it's just natural. Like, it wasn't that he was trying to be elitist. It was, he's just, He's unable to speak Messiah. He was trying and, to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's the, and he does that because he thinks it'll make the other people more comfortable. And it does. And the people he's speaking to feel more comfortable also because they can see, like, oh, he's trying. Like, he's not trying to be a dick, forcing everybody to speak English. And it's just like, it's really out of necessity. Like, mm-hmm. it's the weirdest thing living in a city your whole life and not speaking its language and then suddenly and you're being praised for it the whole mm-hmm. time you're in school right like oh, you speak english so well you're so fluent you're so this you're so that you get into the real world and you're like fuck i can't say anything to anybody or like i don't know if anyone's talking shit about me behind my back right and so that's where it starts i know i know that a lot of ponios become fluent eventually they get into work they start like um going to jobs their their first job or taking over their businesses and their basaya gets better the accent does not the accent stays <laughs> and it's this like weird mix of like tv english and um and very slang basaya mm-hmm. um maybe just like a one of the last few questions what well, it's obvious with my study, it's, there's always this ties of, you know, upper middle class and the struggles of maybe like, just like your friends, um, you know, it's, it's a necessity, but then, you know, ultimately it becomes more, as it becomes more famous, as it becomes more used in schools, in TV and all that, obviously people kind of pick up things but then that's not necessarily getting it because of necessity, but because there's some sort of, you know, social currency or at least what they think of it. Um, what happens if uh, a person who's not from that economic, uh, who's not like rich or not um, upper middle yeah. class speaks, talks like Kanyo, is there some sort of maybe like raising of the eyebrows for people like why do you talk like that you're you know you're not oh, yeah. so like like where's that from like yeah. I don't, like like yeah. oh like or is it something funny? accepted or yeah. something like like it doesn't really doesn't really matter like if you speak like that even if you you are not from that kind of social status uh the, the funny thing is like i have friends from i guess the broadest part of each spectrum of the spectrum right like I guess from the most upper class to like all the way across. And um, I'm not trying to, like, this isn't me being a dick. This is just an observation. I'm not judging anybody for it. But what happens to Konyos when they try to speak Bisaya is what happens to people of like the D's and the E's when they try to speak English. So there's like a meeting in the middle where they'll speak mostly Bisaya and then they'll add English words and then they'd laugh about it, right? And so it becomes a, like a, like, it just becomes funny because we're also Bisaya, you know, like we don't take things too seriously. Mm-hmm. Everything's sort of like a joke to us. And like when the, when the situation stands, we just say char and like everything like gets diffused. Uh, there are people who will raise their eyebrows at you. Like they can tell that like you didn't grow up speaking that way or like there's that um, your accent sounds different or whatever, or you're different. And there's that because there are snobs, like they're elitists, they're real people. But for the most part, like people don't care. Like, you know, like you speak the way you speak 
And there's also like the Chinese kind of konyo where mm-hmm. it's kind of like Bisaya with a Chinese accent because okay. they went to the Chinese schools. <laughs> and like, it sounds different too. I mean, yeah, if you don't speak Bisaya at all, you won't hear it, right? But you can tell when somebody's speaking like, like street Bisaya, when they're like from Colon or whatever. And when they're speaking like Konyo Bisaya, when they're Chinese Bisaya, yeah. like it's if just- they're from, if, if, if they're from Cherish. <laughs> yeah, from, exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. It's the like, um, like, or like, you know, it's like the Chinese intonations on Bisaya, which is like a whole different like thing, right? Because like, it's like the cross section of, um, the upper middle class the upper class with the chinese and it's just like it's it's just distinct yeah. that's the best way to put it <laughs> and i mean again that's like how languages work at the very end of the day it started with street language and it started with yeah, yeah. The social economic background and then it evolves and then into until academics study them which is what i'm doing right now <laughs> and now it's widely accepted i i think the dlsu considers konyo as their official language i'm not quite sure, but i, I kind of i saw that yeah but yeah thank you so much david i think yeah this is good this is good and